You know that Ofsted did their big listen uh, and issued their press release. Uh, the key impact that that's going to have on us in schools or yourselves in schools, it reiterated what Sir Martin Oliver had already said when he was appointed. He's, he's got a keen focus himself on send disadvantaged pupils uh, and the feedback from Big Listen substantiated that as well. I'm sure he was very pleased to be able to say, and the Big Listen said this as well, because that first bullet point is very much part of what, what drives him uh, and the, what, the direction that he is taking off, uh, taking off still under his tenure. So on an inspection, uh, an increased focus on that conversation around what you're doing for your disadvantaged pupils and the implication of that is to be really clear to an inspector or an inspection team the context of your school what does disadvantage mean for you in your school and I was talking with a group of heads there's a small trust that I work for and we had meetings with all the heads and myself and the CEO um, earlier this week gosh uh, and those who are expecting Ofsted imminently were saying actually they do, they're already preferring that Monday is the only day when they jump and the phone rings. So they would say that it's not reducing the overall stress of being in the Ofsted window, but they're saying it does make it easier once they got to mid late afternoon on a Monday. There's going to be that specific focus on inclusion in those report cards when they come next year, but we'll start to see that in reports this coming year. So there'll obviously be some sort of heading or paragraph within these report cards in whatever format they look like. But Ofsted always jump the gun on things. You will see over the course of this year, be it the ungraded letters, keep up the good work, or the full inspection reports for graded inspections. You, there was going to be something about the effectiveness of inclusion within the school. And then what Ofsted wants to do a bigger picture uh, is develop what has always been their remit, which has been to enable a parent to know what a school is like. The initial uh, raison d'etre, a bit of languages for you, um, for Ofsted back in 1992, when inspection reports started being published in the public domain, was primarily to enable parents to make an informed choice of where to send their child. Whatever you say to Ofsted about things you've implemented in school, they're always gonna come back with, and the impact that has been. Okay, so you might want to think through the, the, the messages that people are going to give about. So the Senko under the spotlight, put in place this, done that, developed this, made links with, ascertained the needs of the new intake, and then also going to be right, yeah, you, you obviously know, send um, landscape across the school, what's been the impact? And I've always said to subject leaders, senior leaders, being able to tell an inspector three things you've done as a leader and what the impact has been is really useful. Uh, and I've put this in as an example. This is from a school's own tracking, these insight, and, and they had these bars where it seems to be an issue in the majority of schools. We've had this curriculum for 10 years now, national curriculum, um, and yet I've yet to find a school that would confidently say their summative assessments in non-core subjects, so that the percentage of children who were where they what we called expected standard in year four in history based on our curriculum and the percentage who are working towards that. The information that our teachers put in back in July for those children who are now in year five, I've yet to find a head who would put their mortgage on that being absolutely accurate. Uh, I know we had the pandemic issue, but we still have this curriculum for a long time. And it's because the focus on those foundation subjects has only emerged in the last few years because of Ofsted's focus on the broader curriculum. The message that's got out there on the grapevine is no more deep dives. And you've got lots of subject leaders around the country going, yay, yeah, they won't ask me anymore. But they will. They're very likely to. One or two other areas of focus. These will be negotiated in the phone call. Based on what they've seen on your website, based on the conversation they have with you, this is where it's useful to have some ideas in mind in terms of managing inspection. If you want them to focus on all the work you've done around personal development um, and the PSHE curriculum and the work you've done on, on that, and it's a real strength in the school now, get that into the conversation.